Hey guys, welcome back to Weld.com. So today we got another special video for you. We're going to do a short circuit MIG versus spray, right? So we've always been told, I've always been told, short circuit MIG is not appropriate for anything over 5 16 So today we're gonna use some 3 8 plate. We're gonna put the two transfer modes together. I anticipate that the short circuit welds when we go to do a bend test at the end, I anticipate that the short circuit one is going to fail, whether it be in the root or the face, most likely in the root. But I have made an ass out of myself before on this channel. This is your brain on sleep deprivation. Baby shark do 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 baby shark do 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 baby shark do 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 baby shark. Uh, if you don't believe me, go ahead and check out the stringer versus weaves video and the um, push versus pull video. Push versus pull, stringer versus weave. I don't know where he's going to put them. Uh, check those videos out because I have called myself out before um, thinking one thing is going to happen and it's the total opposite. So I could be wrong here, but what we're going to do, we're going to run short circuit MIG and we're going to run spray transfer on both of these plates. We have A36, 3.8 steel, quarter inch root opening, 22 and a half degree bevel. Everything's the same. So we're going to run one short circuit, one pulse. Once we get done, we're going to do a root and face bend on both samples. And uh, we're going to see which one passes, which one doesn't. All right, so first up, we're going to go ahead and run short circuit MIG. I'm going to be running about 330 inches a minute on the wire feed speed, 19 and a half volts. This should yield about 170 amps, which theoretically should be sufficient to weld up 3 8 plate, especially when we're running multiple pass. So let's go ahead. We're going to run the uh, short circuit first, then we'll switch the machine over to where we can run a spray arc, and then we'll do the spray arc demo. We're going to try to keep everything the same across the board. Intermediate uh, pass cleaning we're going to do with a wire wheel just to get rid of any silicon deposits, you know, just, you know, so we don't have any impurities in there. And uh, once we get done, we'll cut them apart, prep them for bend, and then we'll do a side-by-side -side bend test. All right, so from my angle, everything looked pretty good. It looked like the root went in pretty well. Uh, I don't have any lack of fusion on the sides or anything like that. I mean, it's a nice smooth root. Um, but one thing we have to remember about short circuit is that wire is hitting that puddle 20 to 200 times per second. Okay, it's actually creating a dead short. That's why it's prone to lack of fusion. It's just not as hot. It doesn't have that drive like a pulse spray would or a, you know, a shield of metal arc welding. It doesn't have the same arc characteristics. So that's usually why it's not recommended for anything over 5 16 Now, if I was running some sheet metal, perfect. This stuff's gonna dig in plenty, but once we start to get it into the structural plate, you know, that's where D11 picks up is anything eighth inch and above up to unlimited that's where we're going to switch the mode of metal transfer. Now, that's why it's even recommended in D11, GMAW-S, so short circuit, shall not be used, okay, shall. That means it's, you have to, it's not a pre-qualified procedure. You actually have to write your own procedure. If you plan on using gas metal arc welding and the short circuit transfer, you have to write your own procedure if you're going to do that, okay, and then you have to test it and get it qualified because there's no pre-qualified because it's just not as repeatable as the other processes. Let's go ahead, I'm gonna put in an, um, the intermediate passes and then we'll go ahead and put a cap on it. All right, so that's the short circuit. Let's go ahead, switch everything over to spray. We'll knock that one out. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and switch over to 95.5, 95% argon, 5% CO2. That should give us a little bit more heat in the puddle, a little bit more punch and depth of fusion. All right, so we had to adjust our settings a little bit to compensate to get into a spray transfer. So we're kind of on the low end. I'm at 26 volts, 427 inches a minute on the wire feed speed, giving us about a buck 85 on amperage. Let's go ahead and run the roof. All right, so as you can tell from the arc shot, this wire is actually punching down in there nice and deep. You've got that spray effect on the end. So it's a, actually, it's a true spray transfer so I'm not making contact with the puddle. There's no crackling, there's no short circuit going on. Those little droplets are coming right off. Everything's fusing together, it's breaking down the walls and punching into that backing strip. We already got the root pass in. I'm gonna go ahead and put a fill pass in. We'll see where we're at from there and then probably go to cap. All right, so everything laid in nice and smooth. We've got good fusion into both sides of the wall. There's a little area up front, probably about one inch where I initially started. That arc was kind of wandering off a little bit and I overcorrected. Um, or undercorrected, but everything's still tied in just fine. No lack of fusion. Should be able to uh, kind of cover that up and tie in really good with the next pass. 
All right, so I've got two passes on there. Uh, I'm ready to go to cap, but I'm gonna let this plate cool down a little bit on the spray transfer uh, before I go ahead and put those two caps on there. I don't wanna put too much heat input into it. While that's cooling down, I'm gonna go ahead and lay out the plate for short circuit so we can get those cut and start prepping those to bend. If you haven't seen how to properly cut and uh, prep your plates for a bend test, go ahead and check out this video right here. Cameraman will put a link up there. Um, so let's go ahead and start laying this out. All right, with the cover passes in place, I'm gonna go ahead and take this time while that plate's cooling down before I can mark and do the layout on that and cut it up. I'm gonna go ahead and start prepping the, uh, the short circuit plates to get ready for bend. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take the backing strip off. Once again, I'm gonna use the grinder for this. This is the same Victor grain from Ferd that I used in the previous videos. Uh, same exact wheel, haven't even changed the wheel out. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and strip this down. I'm gonna see how many test plates I can do taking the backing strip off with one wheel before we have to switch. All right, so as you can see, I've already taken the backing strip off. And right here, just looking at this, I can tell it's already prone to lack of fusion. Now, I'm still going to blend this, and then we're going to bend it after the fact. But you can see here, we've already got signs of lack of fusion. Short circuit pieces are prepped. I'm going to go ahead and cut up the spray version, um, get those prepped, and then we'll meet you guys over the bender. All right, so the first one we're gonna do, we'll do a short circuit. We'll do the, uh, the root on this one first. So plunger side of the face. Steerick. Cameraman needs to go change into his brown pants now. He'll be right back. Okay, so we can see clear signs of lack of fusion in here. You can tell right, right, right where it ripped was right there where the weld met the base metal. So we got lack of fusion in here. And then it just sheared all the way through. So that root pass is a fail for short circuit. Let's go ahead and bend the face. We're gonna apply pressure to the root of the weld. All right, so we have a couple indications on here. So one indication doesn't necessarily mean it's a fail unless it's over an eighth of an inch or we have a quarter crack exceeding a quarter inch. But if we add the sum of these up, measure each one of these and add the sum up, it's greater than three eighths or any indication greater than an eighth. Okay, this one right here is greater than an eighth. Okay, so I don't need to measure anything. All right, same thing with this one right here. It's a corner crack, doesn't exceed a quarter inch. Um, so that one would probably, uh, that would work. But the combined sum and then any one over an eighth inch except for the corner crack, you're allowed a quarter inch. So this one right here would fail as well. All right, let's go ahead and check the spray. All right, let's go ahead and bend the root for the, uh, the spray transfer. All right, so there's our, uh, our face. Did good on that one. Here's the root sample. Everything looks good. Good, solid, clean weld. Meanwhile, we have the, uh, there's our root for our short circuit, and there's the face. All right, folks, so there you have it. The uh, short circuit versus spray transfer. I always recommend anything over, like I've said before, anything over 5 16 go ahead and switch over to a spray transfer. If you have to get out of position, you know, switch over to a pulse spray. 
But, you know, 5 sixteenths or less, you're fine using regular short circuit MIG, you know, fixing stuff around the garage, body paneling, sheet metal, all that stuff, you're, you're good to go for short circuit. But once it comes to structural, switch over a process or change the mode of metal transfer. Well, hope you guys find this video edu educational as well as entertaining. We appreciate you guys watching. Thanks for the support. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And until next time, make every well better than your last.